I want us to go really quickly to the scripture tonight. Uh, Sunday, we, we want to continue our message and our lesson on foxes from Sunday. We were in Song of Solomon chapter 2, and I want us to go down to verse number 15. Song of Solomon chapter 2, and we're going to start reading at verse number 15. I know the teens are going out to that class. Everyone else, I want you to stand for the reading of God's word. I hope you have it in your Bible or your smart device. Song of Solomon chapter 2, and we're going to read verse 15. When you have it, say, I have the bread. I'll wait for the rest of you. Song of Solomon chapter 2, verse number 15. Amen. When you have it, or, or you can at least read it on the screen, say, I have the bread. Have bread. Okay, there was some, some more of you. We're going to read it in verse 15. It says, catch the foxes. Catch the foxes for us. The little foxes that spoil the vineyards, for our vineyards are in what? They're in bloom. They're in blossom. The harvest is ripe. So catch the foxes for us. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. We're going to continue to talk about the cute little creatures, uh, foxes tonight. Um, Sunday, I, I talked about the, the poetic literature of this text, uh, expressing the love between a man and a woman, a man and a woman that have been betrothed, but now they're in preparation for the wedding day or the consummation of this covenant. But, you know, there's a whole lot that happens between a promise being made and a promise being completed. Yes. I mean, if it was just the prophecy, we'd be good. But there's a space and time between the prophecy spoken and the prophecy being fulfilled. It's called the middle. Right. And it's how you handle the middle will determine how things end. Uh, Pastor Juan Wilder just spoke a message on the other week was an anointed message called Oil for the Middle. Because we start off with so much zeal and so much fervor and so much passion, but somewhere in the middle, you get tired. Somewhere in the middle, you get frustrated. And somewhere in the middle, because of time, you start compromising. Right? Because if, if I only had to wait three days, it would be easy. But then you have scriptures in the Bible that says after you have suffered a while. The issue is how long is a while? I know the scripture says we've been made endure for a night, but oh, but sure, come in the morning. And that would be easier if the night and the morning was predicated upon a 24 hour turnaround. But the more you walk with God, the more you realize God's ways are not your ways. God's thoughts are not your thoughts. And there are some things that you thought would have happened sooner than it has happened. It's, survi it's surviving in the middle. It's surviving in between. And, and I preached a message, uh, I think it was last year, uh, talking about the in-between. And the truth is, if we don't learn how to deal with the in-between, the place between the word spoken and the word fulfilled, the place between the vision being casted and the vision being fulfilled, if we don't learn how to deal with that space, we're going to have a hard time dealing with life because the life is living in the in-between. No, really. If you don't learn how to posture yourself spiritually and emotionally, realizing that all of life is some kind of in-between, you're going to feel yourself always defeated, always disappointed because as soon as you do accomplish a goal, you quickly find out there's another goal. That, that's another mark. Yes, because many, if you know what I'm talking about, if you don't, listen, how many can say, you say, Lord, I can't wait till I get that degree. As soon as I get that degree, whoo, I'll be off the hook. Are you off the hook? No. It, it's always something else that God does to keep us engaged and keep us depending on him. Mm. Keeping us yoked to depending and trusting on him. And so he says, no, I have, I'm betrothed to you. I'm making a commitment. Mm, mm, excuse me, something to get out of my mouth. I think it was popcorn from earlier. Anyway, hear me. Betrothal and engagement and antiquity is different 
than betrothal in our hour. See, your engagement was not just about you. It was about the family. The family's name was on the line. It, it came with a price. There was a price associated with covenant. It was a whole lot leaning on this agreement. But don't worry, the weight of it is on the man. That man must, after proposing, he must then go away and add on to his father's house to prepare for his bride. He must add on to her house. Now, and then after he's finished preparing the room, he'll come and get her. But the only issue with that is, there are no telephones. So she's got to be what? She's got to be what? She's got to be ready when the bridegroom comes. She's got, she's got to be ready. That's what we see in John chapter 14. It says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my what? Father's house. There are many rooms is a better Translation in our King James Version, we says there are many what mansions, and and because of that, many of us have been sending up our timber all our lives, hoping one day we're gonna get a mansion. But but hear me, it, it's 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 metaphorical language sharing with us that Messiah Jesus Christ has gone to prepare a place for His bride. Who is the bride? The church. We're His bride, and so as we listen into this. Uh, message and this communication this text message between this man and uh, this woman seeing the picture of the Messiah in this text he says look I'm preparing the space but while I'm away preparing the space look what he says in verse 15 take care of the foxes for us wow take care of the foxes because if you get so caught up in the wedding day and don't pay attention to the little foxes, you'll have a wedding with no wine. You're coming to one of your greatest hours and you'll be missing out on something that's needed for the celebration. And this makes sense why some of us have all of our aspirations and we have this goal that we are trying to reach and if I can just get this, if I can just get married, if I can just, just get the house, if I could just get the car if I can just get the degree and then you get there with no joy with it because wine is a symbol of joy it's a symbol of joy so you get there and then hold on it don't feel the way I thought it was gonna feel why because in the process you were all about the destination that you missed out on the necessities that you were to gather in the journey. I'm going to move on. Little foxes. L little foxes. We all know the major things we need to look out for, but what about those small things that are small but causes great damage? And so Sunday, I talked about, uh, I think I brought up two of them, and one of them I talked about was jealousy. Because jealousy is something that plagues so many people and it plagues churches. It plagues its relationships. It, it plagues friendship circles. It plagues workplaces. But we don't really talk about it because it's not that big of a deal. But I want you to know jealousy is not just a feeling. Jealousy is a spirit. So a lot of our competition and our friction comes from jealousy. We talk about gossip, but oftentimes gossip is the fruit of the spirit of jealousy. Anytime that somebody's name comes up and all of a sudden you have something negative to say, no matter what it is, then you must question yourself. Am I secretly jealous of that person? All right. Oh, I like his shirt. <laughs> I bet you do like your shirt, but listen, I, I, bet, I bet you don't know what he did last year. What does it have to do with me liking the shirt? No, no, really. I, I want to I put a spotlight on it because I want us to be mindful when we open up our mouth to say, what is the source of this? Is this a holy indignation or is this our carnality coming for is this another spirit that's causing us to have feelings toward people that are unjustified? 
especially when we don't even know people personally. When, when you start hoping people fail, when you desire people to be exposed, why is that? And you need to be able to de- identify it. And yes, and I'm not telling you just to identify the people at your work that's jealous of you. Be able to identify jealous, jealousy tendencies in you. Yeah, because when we get in church and we preach about stuff like this, like, tell a bishop, yes, cast it out. No, the whole point of Bible study and these messages is to examine yourself. The reason why you need to be careful, because I said to you on Sunday, make sure you don't try to mask your jealousy with over complimenting people. Over complimenting people do not bring deliverance to you from the spirit of jealousy. No, no. Oh, I'm going to just, oh, I, hey, I like that. Oh, you sharp. Every time I see you, you sharp. And on the inside, you're hoping they slip up and fall. You know, and I know somebody says, are people like that? You would be surprised. You would be surprised. And if you're not like that, you need to be mindful because all of us got a doorway. And you can have a breach in your spirit. And I'm, y'all think I'm playing. I'm telling you, there is oftentimes when there's a breach in someone's heart and their emotions, there can be a thin line between admiration and jealousy. Yeah, they, they admire you. And then what happens is Satan is not a creator. He's only a what? He's only a perverter. So your admiration can be pure. But, but one, one moment being fired, one moment being childhood traumas, anything can be a breach. And then you start going into it's not fair. It's, it's not fair. You start looking at other people's lives and says, why is that not my life? Now, you don't know what price they paying. <laughs> but why is that not, not my life? And then that, it goes from admiring what somebody has to start competing with what someone has. And it's a sad day when we have people who are competing with others and the other person has no idea they're in a competition. This is a scary thing. The reason why that other person it's bad is because when you're in competition with somebody and they don't know and they think your admiration is genuine, then every time they get a win, they start sharing it with you. Do you like, I tell you, every time I turn around, y'all getting a new car. Huh, go ahead, y'all. I like that. And you secretly just jealous. And they says, oh, thank you. But well, let me tell you, I didn't want to tell you, but my husband is getting a Range Rover now. Like, oh, wow, great. Because they have no idea. This is why you cannot let your discernment be sedated by compliments. And some of us will keep people close to us because they become our fans. But fans and foes can sometimes make similar sounds. Hear me. If they can't be you, then they settle by being next to you. Then I talked Sunday about disloyalty. Disloyalty goes against the nature of God because everything about God is loyal. Everything about God. And maybe we need to talk about that more about what does loyalty look like? What does it look like with being being loyal? The reason why I need to say that because the Bible said a sign of the last days is that people will be truce breakers. The word truce breakers is an old English word that means covenant breakers. Now, the reason why we need to talk about that is because we're in a generation like never before. We are in a prenup generation. Right. The generations before us never heard of that. Pre what? No, is that some kind of surgery? No. It's a just in case. You know, look at the marriage numbers now. Our generation really don't understand covenant. We really don't. You know what we understand more than covenant? Convenience. Mm. Oh, we understand convenience. And as soon as it's not convenient for us, then we want to get out of it. That's marriage, that's jobs, that's ministry, that's connections. Because one thing, one thing conflict will teach you, you'll find out who's in covenant with you and who's an opportunist. That the people will stay close to you just in case you win. Just so I can get from your light. Why? But God is looking for people who will be trustworthy, 
who would be in, in, in covenant. Something grieved my spirit last night. It grieved my spirit. I was at home and I was preparing things and I said, you know what? I need to have a Zoom call with my family. I, I just felt late. I said, I need to do a Zoom call with all of the youngest and some of them got different last names. I said, you know, just so we can have prayer, right? And I said, I'm going to call on Geneva and we can do prayer focuses. And I started thinking about all the details. I was like, oh Lord, but I got to tell everybody when you get on, put it on mute. Because I could hear Angela in the background. Y'all, Tommy, get on the call. I hear all of that, right? Then I was writing down, I was writing down what the prayer focuses should be. And then a heavy spirit came on me. A heavy spirit came on me. I said, oh, wow, we need to pray for covenant relationships in our family. Because I looked around in our family. I said, wow. My grandparents were married for 65 years. But there's not that many godly marriages left in our family. I'm talking about my family, but some of you need to look in your family. Look among you, says the enemy, Satan is an enemy of covenant. And our generation looks for every reason to sever ties, to sever connections. It's, it's in our church call, it's in our preaching. We are the generation of the mighty cutoff, but not reconciliation. We, we're, not a, we're supposed to be the repairs of the breach. And every time it gets tight, every time it gets hard, then we pull back. We resign. We step back instead of press forward. Instead of press toward each other. We need, I need a break from you. How many breaks you going to take? I, I, even in ministry, I have never seen, and I'm not talking about our church, but I've never seen in ministry so many sabbaticals. People who are taking sabbaticals from sabbaticals. Yeah, we, I'm, we're, I'm just going to take a sabbatical. I need a little time off. You, didn't you just get back from a cruise or something recently? Now you're going to take a sabbatical. You're gonna, you can't tell me you're churched out. You only come twice a month. So church cannot be your problem. Mm. Don't understand covenant. If you're, uh, co covenant can handle uh, challenge, being challenged. Covenant can handle correction. Covenant can handle misunderstanding. Mm. I says covenant, a covenant relationship can handle misunderstanding. And if someone, if you have a misunderstanding with someone and within 24 hours they didn't told your secrets. That reveals to you it won't covenant. It was convenience. Hmm. So tonight I want to talk about uh, two more foxes. I, was, I, was, I don't know if I told you all uh, this Sunday morning or I told the D.C. Church Sunday night. If not, I'll tell it again. I planted an apple tree in the backyard of the house for my grandmother. And one day, you know, they didn't, the first year they didn't come out when they were big out, apples, at least little tiny apples. And I was looking out the window and I was like, oh my goodness, look at this deer. It's eating the apple off the tree. But the deer eating the apple, the deer eating the fruit did not kill the tree. See, what attacks your fruit doesn't kill the tree. Oh, you'll grow back. It'll grow back. You'll have fruit for another season. But foxes go for the roots. Foxes, they, if they can't reach your fruit, they'll come for your roots. And your roots deal with your foundation, your belief system. Hmm. I don't need you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, the enemy is not after your fruit. He's after your roots. Right. Because you got more. If you got fruit, that's, that is an implication of plural. You, you got more than one. <laughs> you, you might got one cluster of grapes, but I got more than one cluster. But the enemy is doing a long-term game on some of us. That's why I'm telling you, by the time somebody backslid, the backslide and did not start the same week they left. Friends flip up on you. It didn't start at the disagreement. It was already something else laying underneath. I want to expose something tonight. I hope you're listening to me. That means th this is why you can't ignore the foxes. 
You can't ignore the foxes. You cannot stop dismissing these things as little and minute and it's just my little thing. Pastor Cornell Waller preached a message years ago that's called, she called the message, Keepsake Devils. <laughs> Keepsake Devils. She said, you know, like the whatnots. And some of y'all don't know what a whatnot is. Or in the country, we call them whatnots and figurines. Okay, I bring it a little home for y'all city people. Y'all remember the little precious memory things? The little angels and stuff? Knickknacks is what y'all call them? Oh, we call we call knickknacks. That's thing close to the pack of nabs, the, them crackers. But anyway, <laughs> y'all don't know what pack of nabs is, do you? That's the crackers with the cheese. Anyway, I mean, if you had a grandmother or mother that collected them things, every yard sale, every flea market, they just had to have one more. Even the little black church figures sitting on pews and fans. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The man standing behind a podium with the kente cloth. All figurines. And they were, and, and, and a little child come in. Uh-uh, don't you touch my, uh-uh. Don't you touch my figurines. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta dust them and you gotta wipe them off. Some of us have keepsake figurines. They don't take up much space. But what are they collecting? Now, now, that one little thing may not take up much space. But a whole lot of it together start counting more weight than what you knew. Have you ever went to move and realized you had more stuff than what you knew you had? I'm telling you, all of you cigarette smokers in here, Mm -hmm. All you cigarette smokers. Hear me. Okay, okay, okay. All of you little Debbie eating people in here. Come on. All of us got some. Come on. Foxes. All of it is foxes. You late night, late night Oreo cookie, cookies and cream and butter pecan. Come on, all of us got something. All of you little only fan followers, all of you got something. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, just a little something. But if you ever had to go back and count up the money, We talk about a capital campaign for the church. We talk about going out of town. We talk about taking a vacation. You ain't never got money for anything. Y'all don't understand. I'm struggling. I don't have what you have. But if you ever count how much money you put in your keepsake devils. If you ever count it up, how much a pack of Newports costs over here? If you ever count up. If you ever count it up. You realize you got foxes, little foxes, but they're robbing you of your resources. All right, number three. I told you number one was jealousy. Number two is disloyalty. This is one of the foxes that we don't pay attention to, is, and that's offense. 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 Jesus says in the book of Luke, where there's a fence, you know, it's going to come. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, you will get offended in life. Life itself will offend you. <laughs> You're going to be offended by people. You'll even be offended by God. No, when God lets you down. Let's just talk about it within a vacuum. I'm not talking about over your whole life because over your whole life, you already know it always works out for your good. You love God. God is always good. God is always faithful. But have you ever been in a moment? I'm just telling you about those 30 seconds of feeling. You may not have talked about it out loud, but you felt offended by God. Because he does always answer prayer, but it ain't always the answer you want. Isn't that something? When it's what you want, it's God. 
When it's what you don't want, it's the devil. Does God have permission to tell you no? I see. See, I, I thought it was going. I'd already prayed. I knew it was going to work out. Now it ain't working. The old devil got in it. Hold on. Now you didn't put the devil on the level with God. Just because it didn't work out don't mean the devil got in it. It may be God said no. And God's no is very offensive to us. Because we have this idea that our prayers and our praise control God. If I give enough, if I shout loud enough, if I be faithful enough, then God going to do what I want God to do. When you don't realize your faithfulness to God is supposed to be a response to his faithfulness. Your giving is because he gave you seed to sow. And your worship is because of his sovereignty. And I put out petitions and says, Lord, this is what I want you to do for me. Please do it. And then if he does it, you praise him. And if he don't do it, you praise him. Because you know all things work together for the good of them. that love the Lord and them that are called according to his purpose. Just because it didn't happen don't mean the devil got in it. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, consider that God said no. And then you end up offended. We couldn't sit you down Sunday. But something happened between Sunday and Wednesday. And then you start saying stuff like, like you're a new convert. You start saying, I mean, so, I mean, if God is always good, I mean, hold on, how long you been in this? Oh, God's goodness it was predicated upon you getting that job? So you didn't get the job now. God is not good, but he fixed it where your lights stayed on, all your bills are still paid. Now, some of us don't realize in God's love for us, in God's sovereignty, oftentimes he will reject what we wanted to go before us to make way for what we need. As a matter of fact, the more mature you get in God, you stop being offended by God and you say, God, I trust you because evidently there's something else better you got for me. You start praising him off of his no, even without all the details. I don't know. I thought this is what you wanted for me. Evidently, this is not. So, Lord, I got expectation because I know you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all I could even ask or think. I need you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm so glad the lame man did not receive what he wanted. Tell one more person, I need a Bible reader to help me. Come on, tell one person, tell him, I'm so glad that the lame man at the gate didn't get what he expected. Go ahead and explain it to the person. Go ahead and explain it. Go ahead and explain it. Go ahead and explain it. Go ahead, take your time, explain it. There was a lame man in Acts chapter 3 who sat at the gate called Beautiful waiting to receive alms. He looked at Peter and John said, give me a couple of dollars. Peter and John says, see Silver and gold. Hey, how you doing? Have I none? But such as I have, I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to give you more than a 20. In the name of Jesus, I give you more than a 100. In the name of Jesus, get up. Hey, and walk. And at the word of the apostle, his ankles got strength. I need you to lay hands on your neighbor's shoulder and tell him the season that you're in, you're going to be glad God didn't give you what you wanted. I said the season that you're in. God said, I'm going to open doors you didn't even know to knock on. I'm going to make ways you didn't even know to pray for. I need about a hundred people here in this Bible study to open up your mouth on credit. I said, open up your mouth and praise God on credit. Give God a down payment on what you don't even know you paying for. Hey! My God. Hallelujah. I need you to look at somebody, tell them, don't stay trapped. Come on, look at somebody, push them, push them, tell them, don't stay trapped. <laughs> don't stay trapped, don't stay trapped by offense. 
stop rehearsing about what they did to you and what they said about you that can't kill you hallelujah God's destiny for you is too big to let somebody's words keep you trapped in last year they didn't got over it they didn't moved on and you still trapped I don't care who left your church I don't care who left your life I don't care who walked away from you tell your neighbor do yourself a favor and get out of the trap get out of the trap of your emotions get out of your head and start moving in the spirit get out of your head and start moving in the spirit stop overthinking it stop rehearsing it stop saying well i should have said this and i should have said that no use god shut your mouth to save your strength come on god shut your mouth to save your peace get up and start moving in the spirit stop rehearsing it stop rehearsing it stop rehearsing the offense and rehearse the promises of the lord hallelujah Start rehearsing the offense and start rehearsing the promises of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I don't want to be known by my trauma. I don't want my trauma to identify me. Some people are mad because you don't keep telling them about your trauma. You don't need to know all the details of my trauma. There's more to me than the trauma that I went through. Yes, I got abused, but I'm not abused. Come on, hallelujah. Yes, I went through it, but I'm not there anymore. I'm not there anymore. And people want to profit off of your trauma. I, I know you say, uh-uh, you're not over it, you're not over it. No, you take that. You stay there. You stay there. Stop rubbing me on my back. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You tell me, I, I, I just want to be honest with y'all. Y'all tell me out of all the prayer services, and now everybody got a therapist. Now you tell me out of all that therapy and all of the prayer services, you ain't got no victory nowhere. Do you supposed to stay there? Don't you supposed to, come on. Don't you supposed to come out of there at some point? What am I spending my money for? What am I shouting for? If it, and you see what I'm talking about right now? Somebody just got offended. Somebody, but you don't know I, no I don't have to know I'm just asking you what do you expect to get out of it no no no, no. what do you expect what if, if we're going to sit in this session for two hours and you keep on talking about what they did to you and what they said to you and then we come back next week and we do it all over again and you come to the altar and we put oil on you and we pray for you and you cry and we cry for you no we cry with you i believe in all of that but at some point listen listen what jesus said hallelujah i'm gonna I'm get one more well, ask your neighbor ask your neighbor what did jesus ask the lame man at the pool Ask your neighbor, ask her, what did Jesus ask the lame man at the pool? All right, somebody answer. What did he say? He says, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be made whole? And that some people have been lame so long. They stay, they lost the expectation to be made whole. But somebody lift up both of your hands and shout, Lord, I want to be whole. I don't want to just be healed. I want to be whole. I can be healed and still be missing something. Did you hear what I said? I can be healed and still missing something. But tell your neighbor, I want to be whole. Lacking nothing. Missing nothing. Y'all please get away from me. Don't, don't be offended. Don't get offended. You see? And the reason why I want to help you is because life is not going to cater to your sensitivity. It's not. It's, it's not going. One thing about it. I talk about it a lot of times. And growing up with my mother. Whew, you know what I'm talking about, Waukesha. Because she comes from a different. She comes from a different generation. And we want to. We want to speak to our children better. We, we want to be. You know. We, we want to have a better balance. But I'm going to tell you what it prepared me for. It gave me tough skin at a young age. Oh, we did. Now, I don't believe in being verbally abusive to your children. I want to be clear. But my mother didn't cushion me. And this is why I get a revelation. If I can handle the strength of her words, knowing she loves me, 
then when somebody who hates me use their words, it won't throw me off. My mama positioned me where I can go to Afghanistan and make it. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I love you, mama. Thank God for mother, y'all. We honor you. She said, Amen. That's right. Because offense is going to come intentionally and unintentionally. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk about the unintentional. Share this with the person beside you. Tell them you can't shut down every time you get offended. They heard Renee say, I can't shut down every time. Because <laughs> because what happens is without communicating, you're leaving this open to for me to be an habitual offender. Because instead of communicating, you just shut down. And I'm saying to you, hey, what's wrong? You're like, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, all right. And then you get mad because I'm not persistent. <laughs> I just want to help some of y'all to realize it is, it is a challenge dealing with you. I want to tell you, I want to tell you what the people in your house don't want to say because they know you'll get offended again. Your roommates know you'll get a, you go to slamming doors and you know, uh, uh listen. <laughs> I'm going to give you the lesson that we give the kids when they have to transition from getting what they need by crying and then they start coming into an age where they can use phonetics. We say use your words. Stop leaving it open for us to interpret your actions. You stay out of church for two Sundays. And, we, and then you come back and you shout like nothing. No, hold on. No, what was that? We were all in a room together. We were all laughing and we were all talking. And all of a sudden, you got up and you walked out. And then we tested, are you, are you coming back? I'm like, I'm good. What happened? I got tired. I got, I got a paper I need to finish. In a minute, I'm coming and tap somebody on the shoulder. I just feel it. That's... I mean, <laughs> I got this paper. No, listen, it was not a paper. I know you do got a paper due, but it was not about the paper. That spirit of offense. This is when you know you're trapped by spirit of offense because it starts controlling your movements. It controls your movements and your mood. Mm. Offense. Y'all all right over here? Y'all good? We good? Somebody said offended. I'm working through it, but I'm offended. Because <laughs> you know what offense? Offense, I want you, if you're writing this down, I want you to write this down. Uh, the spirit of offense affects your senses. Listen, Neil, it affects your senses. It, it, the two main senses that you have that the spirit of offense will attack is your hearing and your vision. You'll give more creativity to people than what they have. You're, when that spirit of offense get on you heavy, you'll start drafting in your head this whole coup that's been crafted against you. No, I'm serious. When the spirit of offense get a hold of you, you're like, okay, see, he preaching this message. I know Cassie told him because I don't know for real. Well, Cassie won't even hear Sunday. I know, uh-uh, listen, I know how they do. So what happened, Cassie, when she walked up and did like this, she was really saying, Keisha over here. And they didn't put a whole story together. It'll make you look at somebody's Facebook status and say, screenshot, mm-hmm. This was about me. And then you then, then one of your friends tried to help you say, oh, it's actually a repost from 2022. See, no, what it is, see, people got ways on Facebook of doing. When spirit of offense, it is hard to counsel 
someone who's trapped by the spirit of offense. Because I'm going to tell you what, when the spirit of offense got a hold of their ears, no matter what you say, they hear something totally different. They would have missed the apology. You would have said, I want to, I want to say, please forgive me, you know, because I did, I know sometimes I do say things a little strong. So please forgive me. If I, and then, then it says, you know what? He didn't even apologize to me. Well, I thought he says, yeah, but hold on. Did they apologize or not? My, my whole point in teaching this lesson is not for you to look across the aisle and say, you know, Bishop is talking about you. No, it's. No, no, no. I, I, I know we, I was in a meeting earlier today uh, with the pastors, Pastor Marvin and Pastor Westgate. And I felt the spirit of offense coming up in me. Because <laughs> one of the pastors, I ain't going to point out which one. <laughs> and I appreciate him. He looked at me, he said, he looked at me, he said, now, are you upset? Are you good? I mean, I said, I said, I said no, no, I'm, I'm pushing down. No, you got to be honest. I said, no, I use my words. I said, no, I'm processing that, trying to make sure I don't get offended and frustrated. Because you know you. So my escape would have been to say, oh, you know what? I forgot. I got, oh, you know what, y'all? I got another meeting. I got to go. No, I made myself sit in it. Because offense will get on you and you'll forget what you know about the people that you work with. The person that you married. The person you're in ministry with. The person you're in relationship. Offense will make you forget all the times they stood up for you. They supported you. And they rescued you. And what, oh God, the Holy Ghost got me saying this tonight. Offense will get on you and make you forget everything before it. And it'll trap you in the moment. It'll trap you in the moment. And so one correction will say, you've never been there for me. One no. One, no, you've never been. Where's the church people now? Right. They, you know, they in the same place they were when they paid your rent. Offense. It will, it will attack your eyes. Y'all see why I, I had to cut the message in half. Let me give you, let me give you. Uh, and so how do you, how do we deal with offense? The same way we deal with jealousy. We got we to gotta use it. We got to talk it. We got to move. You know, you know uh, if you sit in a certain position too long, your legs get numb. I'm not going to use the illustration, but just trust me. If you sit too long, you'll go and... <laughs> You'll be on your phone and hold that. Okay. Some of y'all catch it in the spirit, all right? <laughs> Crawling out the bathroom trying to make it because your, your legs still lost. <laughs> Can we take this part? Oh, no, we live, man. We can't take it out. <laughs> but you know what's funny is y'all knew what I was talking about. So I'm not going to even be offended at you laughing. <laughs> and how do you get the blood circulating? You got to move. The challenge is moving can be painful. But you got to keep moving. You got to keep talking in the house. It don't mean you deny that you got offended. No, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You offended me last night with that. <laughs> what you want to eat? <laughs> Come on, we got to grow up in God. Because I know it's just a little thing, but that little thing can spoil the vine. And next year you won't have no fruit. And you went a whole weekend without talking. Now a whole weekend can turn into a week. And that becomes your pattern. That every time you get offended, you shut down. And who wants to stay in a marriage where you shut down once every month for a week? Because you might go back to reach for it and then not be there. Offense. Oh, it's just a little thing. You know, everybody get offended, but how do you handle it? Let me, get, let me do the last one. Another fox that would destroy the vine. 
Destroy your harvest. Are y'all ready for this big demon? Well, ain't it cute? <laughs> Indifference. I know. We don't know to rebuke that. But indifferent is when you start losing a lack, having a lack of interest. You lose all your enthusiasm. You become apathetic. And after a while, you start going like this. You just get numb. You don't, you don't even feel no more. And you know, how do people get there? Disappointment can get you there. No, really. When, when you keep on building up your faith, expectation, trust in somebody, and you keep on getting taken advantage of, things don't pan out. So after a while, you just be like, mm. no. Yes. Come on, we're going to conquer the world. All right, so yeah, conquer the world. I heard that before. Come on, baby, we're going to do better. We're going we gonna to start praying every morning before we, yeah, mm, okay. But if you decide, I mean, get me up, but if you don't, it's okay. Just become indifferent. Yeah. Because we know to rebuke jealousy. But, but when you stop, you stop feeling. And I know it's costly to feel. That's why we don't like to feel. That's why we like to sedate ourselves. So we all reach for a little something to sedate. You know, you know, get a little something to smoke. Mm -hmm. A little pornography. You know, it's late. It's 12 30. It's one o'clock in the morning. Ice cream, you know. No, I'm serious. You ain't, you're not hungry. It's just, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to feel. It, it's, it means you've clocked out. Tell your neighbor, don't clock out. It means you don't care either way. It is, it's, it, I got this point, and the Lord spoke this to me Saturday night when I told y'all Sunday when we were sitting at the table. I was sitting at the table, brother, and I told you, brother, I said, the Lord just spoke to me. We were sitting at the table. I didn't even know God gave me this point before I even got the message. We were sitting at the table, and we were just laughing and talking, and all of a sudden, uh, Minister Rob knocked his cup over and I knew he had a cup full of water but when, when he knocked the cup over in my direction nothing came out but ice because he had already drank the water and we was like whoo we missed that and then we went on talking and laughing but he never got up the ice and I said and it hit me I said brother Rob we need to get this up because we celebrating that we dodged the bullet but we still standing in front of the target that means it's only a matter of time. I'm trying to wake somebody up in the Holy Ghost. It's only a matter of time that this situation is coming back around. And if you don't wake up, your outcome is going to be different. Give me a scripture. Give me this scripture. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. Everybody grab it in your Bible. We're closing now. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. It's in the New Testament. Listen to what it says. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. I want to read it. Um, I think this is the message Bible. Don't waste your time on useless work, mere busy work. Because just because you're busy, don't mean you're not indifferent. Some of us hide in our work. We don't address nothing. We're not going to have no real conversations. And if somebody try to sit down with you so we can process this. Look, I got all these clothes. I got to wash all these clothes. I got, I got, I got to go to the church. I got to work. I got to. Some of us use church work as an escape. We use the kids as an excuse. 
We volunteer for extra hours because we got to pay this off when the truth is we become indifferent to our spouse. We become indifferent to the ministry. We become indifferent to things that matter because of disappointment. Because we don't want to feel pain. We don't want to be let down. He says, don't waste your time on useless work, mere busy work, the barren pursuits of darkness. Expose these things for the shame they are. It's a scandal when people waste their lives on things they must do in the darkness where no one will see. Rip the cover off those frauds and see how attractive they look in the light of Christ. Wake up from your sleep. Climb out of your coffins. Christ will show you the light. So watch your step. Use your head. Make the most out of every chance you get. These are desperate times. If this epistle to the church of Ephesus is telling us, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. That means something is going to be coming and you're going to miss it. Something is going to come and you're not going to be prepared for it because you've gotten so numb. I had a friend of mine. She, she lived here in Lynchburg, a wonderful Christian artist, beautiful young lady. Um, she went to Bedford one night to record at a studio in Bedford. On her way back, a deer ran out in the road and she swerved to keep from hitting the deer and she hit a tree and she um, ended up paralyzed. From the waist down. She survived the accident. She was paralyzed from the waist down. She lived with her, her, her parents. Uh, she had her own place, but you know, she had to recover, go through rehab. And finally, she told her parents, listen, I want my independence. I want to go back to my house. But they said, she says, I'll make do. I need to go back to my house. And um, blessed memory, unfortunately, she died. Not from the accident. She died because in her process of getting in and out of the wheelchair, she scarred her hip. But because she couldn't feel it, she didn't realize it. And it got infected. And some of us don't want to feel pain. We don't want to feel challenged. We don't want to feel disappointment. But it's all a part of living. Because if you don't feel it, that don't mean it's not hurting you. You don't want to wake up and eventually realize it's too late and the infection is spread out in every area of your life. So saints, as cute as it is, don't try to domesticate something that needs to stay out in the wild. Foxes, God bless you. Clap your hands and give God praise. The Bible says man shall not live by bread alone. But every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I pray that you are blessed by the message today. And if you want to continue to get more inspirational, motivational, and even more gospel messages, I encourage you to follow our YouTube channel or subscribe to our podcast. And today we want to give you an opportunity to partner what we're doing domestically here at our local church and what we're doing all over the world. There are ways to give. And remember, when you sow, that seed may leave your hand, but it'll never leave your life. The Bible declares to us that when we sow, seeds are connected to harvest. Well, I want you to remember that I know what it feels like to cry until you have no more tears left to cry. But after you finish crying, don't stop. Get up and keep going.